So I'm going to go ahead and play your movie, and then you should you should be able to hear it over there as well. So this is what this is the movie. My personal theory is based on a somewhat different conception of the structure of the universe. I would like firstly to explain briefly why this structure of the universe must be modified. In 2011, Perlmutter, Ries and Schmidt received the Nobel Prize for their work showing that the expansion of the universe was accelerating. The present mainstream lambda CDM model want to explain this phenomenon invoking dark energy. Whatever is the nature of this dark energy, it is negative. This dark energy content must be made of a collection of negative energy states. People familiar with uh, quantum mechanics tools know that these negative energy states are considered to be basically impossible. Recently, uh, our team has installed on the platform ResearchGate a new paper. This is a paper entitled on evidence for negative energies and masses in the Dirac equation through a unitary time reversal operator. We have submitted this paper recently to a peer-reviewed journal. You will find this preprint easily on the ResearchGate website. Here is a corresponding address. When we consider the probability of the existence of states, we find uh, the ratio energy divided by the mass. And uh, since the 20s, people considered that these states were impossible just because that when we invert the energy, the probability would be negative. But if you invert energy, you would invert the mass too. So the probability remains positive. Don't insist, but as you can see, the existence of negative masses must be considered. People tried to do that in cosmology, but in 1957 the cosmologist Hermann Bondy showed that it produced a very disagreeable phenomenon called the runaway phenomenon. It comes from the Einstein equation, if we try to introduce negative masses in this equation, we get the following result. Positive mass attract everything, negative mass attract everything. Then if we consider a couple of masses with opposite sign, the positive mass escapes, chased by the negative mass, and the experience a uniform acceleration, infinite acceleration, and the energy is conserved because the kinetic energy of the negative mass is negative. Where does the bug comes from? It comes from the Einstein equation. This Einstein equation as a solution as a field of geodesics and there is a single field. It means that a positive mass and a negative mass react exactly the same way if embedded in a given gravitational field. Or this is an a priori hypothesis. If we want to escape these constraints, we have to consider two geodesic fields. So we have to consider two metric solutions and this metric solution must be a solution of a system of two coupled field equations. The building of this system of two coupled field equations is a very long story, but it was synthesized in a paper issued in 2014 in the journal Astrophysics and Space Science. Here is the corresponding system of the two coupled field equations with their two metrics. 
geometries, it means that between two points A and B, you have two different paths with different length and different velocity of light. The corresponding system of interaction laws is different. Left, two positive masses mutually attract. Two negative masses mutually attract and don't repel. And if we consider a couple of masses with opposite sign, they repel each other so that the runaway paradox is eliminated and the action reaction principle is restored. This model perfectly fits the local verification of general relativity. In effect, as the masses with opposite signs repel each other, in the vicinity of the solar system, there is almost no negative masses, so that the first equation of the system becomes the Einstein equation, which is nothing but an approximation of this genus cosmological model. Now, we have published six papers since four years, and this is very fruitful. For an example, in June 2018, we have published a paper showing that uh, the model fits 12 observational features. Considering the problem of interstellar travel, the most important result has been published in Progress in Physics in July 2018. I give you there two addresses from my website where you can download those two papers. The second paper issued in Progress in Physics gives a challenging interpretation of the fluctuation of the microwave, a, a cosmic background of the CMB. If we follow the general relativity, the universe is considered as a four-dimensional hypersurface. In the genus cosmological model, this surface has two sides. On one side, the distances are measured with the first metric, and on the other side, the distances are different and measured with the second metric. This is a piece of paper with two distinct points, A and B, but no distance is indicated. Now, this is a map, so the distances are indicated, and I can size the distance between A and B and I count 14 squares. But I could imagine I have another way to measure this distance on the other side. And on the other side the scaling is different. Then I have only four squares. So on this side the distance are ten times smaller than on that side. And we live on this side. This corresponds to a bimetric description of the universe. You don't have two parallel universes, but you have a single universe with two distances. And you may fixture that with the two sides of a hypersurface, a four dimensional hypersurface. On the two sides of this four dimensional hypersurface, the distance are simply different. What do we see on this image of the cosmic background? We see the imprint of the negative side of our universe. How does this imprint form? It forms through gravitational forces. Because the two systems interact only by gravitation. They don't interact through electromagnetism and they don't exchange light because negative masses emit negative energy photon and you are not equipped to capture this negative energy photon. So the negative structures are invisible to us. So if we can't get images with our telescopes, how can we guess that such structure would exist? 
Well, they reveal their presence through a lot of important phenomena. You have the acceleration of the expansion of the universe, but also the confinement of the galaxy, the spiral structures, which come from the gravitational interaction of the mass of the galaxy with its surrounding negative matter. This negative mass also corresponds to the invisible primal antimatter, the strong gravitational lengthening effect. You have understood that the presence of these negative matters gives what we call dark matter and dark energy, which are nothing but the produce of the dark science, which becomes darker and darker each year. If the negative energy can be associated to negative mass, the negative mass cannot be considered as a peculiar form of dark matter because the dark matter has a positive mass. Let's be back to the central problem of interstellar travel. The analysis of the fluctuation of the cosmic background gives two data. The first is that the length are 100 times shorter but the speed of light is 10 times higher. So basically, the travel time for negative mass craft could be reduced by three order of magnitude, by a factor 1000. So we cannot any longer invoke the limitation to the speed of light of positive spaces to say that interstellar travels would be impossible. With such drastic reduction of the travel time, we could imagine that we could reach systems at distance like some tenths of your light, or perhaps that they could reach us. Or would it be possible to invert the mass of a craft and the mass of the passengers? And how much energy would we need to achieve such process? As I said, we live on a four-dimensional air surface with two sides, and we live on one side, where the distances are very large. We would like to be transferred on the other side. On the following feature, we are going to feature these two sides as two parallel universes. But keep in mind that there is a single universe with two sides. Here, I use a two-dimensional representation. So, up is the first side, and a craft is just a cycle. This is the world, and inside I have fixture a passenger. So, this is the initial configuration. The craft belongs to the positive sector. How could I transfer this craft and its passengers in the negative sector on the other side of the hypersurface. Mathematics and the topology brings the solutions. It is called a geometrical surgery. Let's be back to our craft in its original configuration. And then we are going to split the plates into two parts in order to evidence the curvature. In general relativity, you know that uh, the curvature goes with the energy content. The higher the energy content, the stronger the curvature. We are not going to make a warm hole. We are just going to concentrate energy in the vicinity of the wall of the craft. And then it produces this curvature. In two dimensions, the energy concentrates in some sort of circular valley. This produces a strong curvature, and on the negative side, you have the induced curvature. Then, when the curvature becomes infinite or very, very strong, the surgery occurs and the two folds are differently connected. In other words, a white disk is connected to the blue domain 
and the blue disc is connected to the white domain. And you know that this white and blue domains are supposed to represent the two sides of the surface. If I come back to this model with a two side space, there I have a vehicle, a craft with a guy inside, and the white surface is my sector, and this is the negative sector. When the transfer is achieved, a volume corresponding to the negative sector has been transferred in the positive sector, the white sector. And where is the passenger? Where is the craft? On the other side. So, in the negative sector. If this model is correct, something could happen if we could concentrate energy in a very thin layer surrounding the craft as a passenger. Well, how to bring energy to atoms in order to reach uh, some critical condition about energy density, local energy density and curvature. There is a way to concentrate energy matter using metastable states. If we bring energy to atoms or even to nuclei of atoms, we can put this nuclei into excited state with a certain lifetime. Atoms can be excited in metastable states. For example, helium has a metastable state corresponding to 22 electron volts. The corresponding lifetime of this metastable state is 100,000 longer than the classical excitation state lifetime but it doesn't exceed a millisecond. Surprisingly, we find atoms whose isomers corresponding to metastable states have very long lifetimes that can be sized in seconds, hours, days, years. So that if the external shell of a craft is made of such material, we can think about injecting energy in this shell that will not be able to remove this energy. So we could create critical condition in such matter. How to concentrate energy in such nuclei? We can think about nuclear magnetic resonance process. To do that, we have to create a very strong magnetic field something like a thousand tesla and we cannot create this field with coils because the magnetic field would not be uniform around the coil so the solution is to put electric charge on the external wall and to put the craft into a rotation fast rotation in order to create this strong magnetic field but what about the Passengers of the craft they would be killed by this rapid radiation due to the centrifugal force. So the solution is to put them in a cockpit in a passenger's uh, compartment that could be disconnected from the craft when this craft has to achieve this very fast rotation. So we get the following solution. On this image you can see the craft with his shell. At the equatorial part you have a toroidal chamber filled by a case. We can transform this case into a plasma and then make it turn by MHD forces circling all around and this causes the opposite movement of the craft at uh, fast velocity and if we deposit electric charge on the wall this will create the required strong magnetic field we may see inside the cockpit which protect the passenger against 
this rotating movement. Well, I see that uh, this video is close to 20 minutes. I don't know what you are expecting from me. I will, uh, I will hand there. Of course, uh, I have a lot of other things to say about uh, interstellar travels. Well, it's the beginning. Okay. Okay, looks like we just finished the video, and that was very interesting. Um, you say you had lots more to say. Is there anything that you'd like to add to the video? Yeah, well, 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 you know, my English is very poor. You know, I speak slowly, but please speak slowly too, because I don't understand you. Why did you say? I said, uh, do you have anything to add to the movie? Because it was only twice. Yes, I will. Go ahead and, and tell us what you want to say. We've got plenty of time. Oh. <laughs> well, it's about uh, the travel itself. Uh, suppose we could uh, invert the mass of the craft and the mass of the passenger. So you have a Gulliver effect. Remember the story of the travels of Gulliver. When he arrives in a certain universe, he becomes very large and very small. And in this kind of uh, situation, when you transfer the atoms, they are very large with respect to the negative mass atoms, negative mass particles. Or well, if you assume that you have a conservation of the energy, then you, the length of the waves must be adapted. I mean, uh, the, we could compare the size of a particle to its Compton, Compton length. So, uh, corresponding to the Compton length, uh, if you transfer the mass in the other, in, in the negative uh, sector, then the waves are very large. And the way to shorten the waves, to make it appear at real stylistic velocity. So, uh, if you don't take any precaution, when you invert the mass, all the particles will be moving at the relativistic velocity in a uh, random uh, direction. So you have to orient, to make the orientation of the particle and I think it could be related to the spin. Uh, that's where uh, when you have this craft uh, making this large uh, magnetic field, the orientation of the spins of all particles contained there becomes parallel and when the mass is inverted the relativistic velocity is in that direction. So there is no acceleration. The concept of acceleration falls down, and when the mass is inverted again, the slowing down is immediately. So we have no trouble there. And you know, you know, I, I connect that to the flying saucers phenomena. I have seen one uh, myself, and so on. So we are uh, puzzled by this. Uh, they make sharp turns, they accelerate, disappear, and this kind of model explains many features about that. And uh, on the other side, if some of such craft uh, should, uh, falls down on, on the earth, there is no explosion. Uh, you know, when you have a B-52 that uh, goes to the earth, you have big, big explosion. So, you have no fuel, <laughs> you have no uh, rocket propulsion. Uh, this, this is, uh, I think, and uh, it fits with the short duration of the travels, but the story would not be uh, zero second. It, it would take months, three months, for example, for such a well, <laughs> And uh, also, uh, well, I, I have published many things about that. Uh, this craft uh, like use also magnetron hydrodynamics uh, systems to move in the air and to move at uh, supersonic velocity without uh, sonic bones and uh, without turbulence. That's how I was involved 50 years ago in this kind of problem because I had built a shake tube, a, a plasma shake tube, and this plasma shake tube was a gun shooting case. 
and this case was coming in a channel at a sufficient velocity. And with a two Tesla field and electrode, I could produce electricity, two megawatts electricity. So the case in a constant uh, section uh, channel was so down very fastly, and I, I could produce a shockwave. And I had a full shockwave with no uh, obstacle, just by electromagnetic force. So I said to myself, you can if I can make a uh, uh, shockwave without a uh, material object just by electromagnetic force, I should remove a shockwave with electromagnetic force. So there was a PhD thesis about that. Uh, it was it works quite well. And at first, you know, uh, I, I made a high hydraulic uh, simulation, hydraulic simulation. You know, when you have a boat uh, cruising on, on the sea, uh, you have a front wave and bottom wave, and you know that this bottom wave and front wave are the analog to the shock wave on an airplane. Uh, you, we studied that in aeronautical school. And I made an experiment with a uh, two Tesla field, and then these waves could be removed. And then we make a simulation. So it's a good idea. And even more, you know, when you consider the last talk of Putin about the new weapons, new Russian weapons with Mac 10 and Mac 20, I think he uses MHD systems. So, well, I, I think I'm good specialist about MHD. But, you know, these things need to make a plasma around it, you have uh, electrodes and so on. And you get French research. That's the best subject to move in. That's why I was interested. And then I just said to myself, how could we achieve the interest of That's all. Okay. Well, let's, let's thank the speaker. Thanks for calling us. <laughs>